that this is the heart and soul of America represented in this incredible community that pulls together. You have the care and the dedication and the warmth and compassion that is seldom seen across the state. There are small pockets of opportunity and, and folks that are working hard, but there's something special about this community and what you've been able to do and accomplish here. You know, as mentioned, I, I had the greatest privilege to serve in the United States Marine Corps, and this was a time when not everybody was lining up in the Vietnam era. Uh, my father called and said, John, would you come back and help turn around the family business? And I had found some home with these great leaders and, and incredible challenges and tremendous privilege. And so Jan and I, we packed up our Chevy and our golden retriever, and we head back to uh, St. Louis in a small family business that my grandfather had started in 1908. Now the end of the story is today it's Founders Day at our company, uh, March the 4th, 109 years from my grandfather's birthday here. And this company has survived all the ups and downs. But it started on the plant floor with the forklifts with 30 to 40 individuals. The, the very first week I heard the knock on the door, I'm from the government, I'm here to help a, a regulator ready to shut us down. And folks, I, I'm, I'm not a rancher, not a farmer, but these same core principles apply to all the businesses. I met a young couple over, where are you guys, with the, in the restaurant business. I said, have you, have you signed the personal guarantees and signed your life away? And they nodded. I said, I want you to meet my wife. We did that many years ago, too. You know, we, you go all in with the hopes and dreams, what you want for your kids to carry on the opportunities that came be, uh, uh, before you. And, and that's all we want. We just want our kids and the next generation, and you're right, our grandkids, to have that privilege. Very simple reason. And that is that our government is broken. It is no longer government for the people. It has become government for insiders. And I can't stand by, we can't stand by any longer, and ignore the fact that our country is in trouble, our state is in crisis, and our people are not protected. Think about the crisis and the lawlessness in Ferguson. I went out to Ferguson, and I will tell you this, that if we had had a leader who had shown up with any kind of command presence and courage and calm and clarity, we would have had peace by the second night. But our governor failed to show up. Our chief law enforcement officer, our attorney general failed to show up. And you know what, folks? I talked to our police officers who were out there that night. St. Louis City, St. Louis County, Missouri Highway Patrol. And you know what? They deserve to be led, not by Chris Coster, a lawyer. They deserve to be led by a leader. They deserve to be led by somebody who knows what it means to put on body armor and wear a sidearm who knows what it means to say goodbye to your family at night and step into the dark and do dangerous work. We see crises all around us. Look at what's happening at the University of Missouri. You know what, I've worked with a lot of 19 and 20 year old young men and women. I have seen them launching aircraft off the back of aircraft carriers. I have seen them put on 80 pounds of body armor and gear, walking through the deserts of Iraq, working through the mountains of Afghanistan. And yet, we have students at the University of Missouri who complain that things are too tough on them. You know what, folks? One year of tuition at the University of Missouri costs more, tuition room and board costs more than half of the average income of a family right here in Missouri. And we have students who are complaining that people aren't spending enough on them. And Gary said to the reporter, well, we don't think of Catherine as a woman. <laughs> and I knew exactly what he meant. He said we're Republicans. We picked the person who could get the job done. And Gary knew that not only was I, somebody who, uh, was I someone who would get the job done, but that I shared his Midwestern values, that I hadn't grown up in St. Louis. I didn't move there until I was 27 years old. I'm a Missourian by choice. I grew up in rural Nebraska and Iowa, showing horses and participating in 4-H. 
And one of the things that I learned as I was growing up and learning to be a Republican was this simple notion that we should live by the Constitution, that our founders had great wisdom. And if I have the chance to be your next governor, it is the Constitution that will be my guide. So the very first right, I think, that the Constitution protects, and the U.S. Supreme Court and I will disagree on this, is the right without which there is no other. I believe in the right to life. And when I was Speaker of the House, we passed the first ever 24 waiting hour period for abortions. We ended public funding. If I get the chance to be your governor, I'll support the right to life, and I'll put an end to all funding for Planned Parenthood right now. I also believe in the Second Amendment. And when I was Speaker of the House, with Chuck's help, Mike Cunningham's help, and with the help of, frankly, 18 Democrats, not only did I pass and support, support and pass, but overrode the governor's veto to make concealed carry the law here in Missouri for the first time in our state's history. And as your governor, I will always support the Second Amendment. I'm the only one who found a way to stitch together a coalition that got to a majority and got to the winner's circle. I did that with enormous support from you here in Howell County. And again, I'm humbled and honored to have that support. What are the constituent elements that make up our majority coalition? Well, and, and what is the uh, formula that leads to carrying 109 of 114 counties across our state last time and still doing a little better in the urban areas than our other candidates do? Well, first of all, it involves de a devotion to the first right in the Declaration of Independence, the right to life of the innocent unborn, and I'm the only candidate standing before you offering himself for governor who has the Right to Life, Missouri Right to Life, Defender of Life Award proudly on my wall for having passed the first bill banning partial birth abortion in our state. I am also, I am also the only candidate in the race who has the National Rifle Association's highest rating of A-plus for having passed the right to carry concealed weapons over a, a Democratic governor's veto and extended that natural right of self-defense to all Missourians. We are a safer state because of that, and, and we can be proud of defending those Second Amendment rights. Whether it is the property rights battles that I've been involved in, shoulder to shoulder with so many people in this part of our state, uh, the Ozark Property Rights Coalition, Michael Slack over there from Oregon County, and my other friends that I've made in the property rights battles against the Blue Way, against the federal plan to take over the Ozark Rivers, the Blue Way plan that we successfully beat. We, we actually won that one. We beat back. And that was a true grassroots effort. Ask the activists in that campaign. Ask the ones who was down in the trenches with them among elected officials. Ask the activists across our state who've been battling Common Core for the last three years, which statewide elected official has stood behind, beside, with, alongside, and behind those battlers against Common Core. They will tell you I've been there with them. 